So, uh, Professor Samir Sande um, is, is from uh, University of Oregon, and he is also the uh, president of the um, and director of Para Tools. Um, so today we'll be talking about performance engineering using a map instrument tau. I indicated, introduced this in my morning talk. Uh, we have been working very closely together, and you will see a lot of results on the on the tau. Uh, and I'm happy to how things have been integrated. Uh, so he has helped actually develop the Tau performance system, uh, the PDT, the program database toolkit, and also the extreme scale scientific software stack E4S and the HPC Linux test. His research interests include tools and techniques for performance instrumentation, measurement, analysis, runtimes, HPC container runtimes, and compiler optimizations. He serves as the director of the performance research laboratory at the University of Oregon and as the president and director of Para Tools. Um, so Samir, uh, please feel free to share your screen and- uh, Thank you very much for inviting me. And uh, I will start my slide. Thank you again for inviting me to the MUG conference. My talk is on performance engineering using MVAPH and Tau. And uh, here I would like to break it down into three different parts. Uh, uh, after the introduction, I would like to describe the MPI tools interface that we use to connect MVAPH2 and Tau and how we have integrated Tau with it and what are the benefits. I would of course like to thank the MVAPH2 team at the Ohio State University and the Tau team at the University of Oregon for all their efforts. So the Tau performance system uh, is a project that I've been working on for over 25 years now. It's a comprehensive performance profiling and tracing toolkit. And it has uh, support for instrumentation, measurement and analysis. And it's widely ported to many HPC application, uh, uh, HPC uh, platforms. And our goal is to support all the runtimes, all the platforms in a, in a portable manner. Uh, it, has a BSD style license and uh, it uses performance and control variables exported by MVAPH2. And that is the core of uh, my talk today about how you can use the key internal features of an MPI runtime and uh, use it for guiding your performance instrumentation. So if you are wondering what kind of performance data Tau can show you, it can show you how much time is being spent in each application routine. And even at the loop level, it can show you the outer loops, inner loops, and the contribution of each statement using event-based sampling. Instead of time, you can replace it with hardware performance counters from packages such as Pappy and Liquid. That can show you detailed cache level information as well. You can see the memory usage of your code when and where the memory gets allocated, what is the high water mark for memory, how does the application's IO characteristics look, what is the peak read and write bandwidth of individual calls. You can see the MPI IO uh, bandwidth and the names of files, the total volume of data. You can see the contribution of each phase of your application, the time spent in different phases, how the application scales, and if you are wondering how you can tune MPI for better performance, it can show you the performance and control variables that MVAPH2 exports, so you can observe and control its performance. There are three main parts to Tau. Uh, there is the instrumentation where we add the hooks to your program, and that can be done in a variety of different ways, including source instrumentation at the link level, or even preloading a Tau library. And once you generate the uh, instrumentation, it can measure using profiling and tracing and generate profiles and traces that can be visualized in Paraprof, a visualizer that comes with Tau, and export traces to third-party tools such as Vampire, and, and JumpShot is uh, supported and ships with Tau. So we support both direct as well as in indirect performance methods where direct methods uh, insert probes. Uh, you know, typically you have start and stop calls inserted in your code to time specific code regions. And uh, indirect mode supports event-based sampling. So you can 
periodically sample the calls. You can also track user defined events such as the message sizes and uh, values of performance variables exported by MPI. And, and you can also associate them along a calling path or in a context event. So they are interval events which have the begin and end semantics as well as atomic events that are triggered with a data value and they can be inserted at uh, many different uh, levels. Here with entry and exit based, enter and exit uh, interval events, you can accurately measure the exclusive as well as inclusive duration of uh, your code regions. So if there's a function foo that calls bar, you can measure the green inclusive time as well as the orange exclusive time or other calls. And you can have many different flavors of uh, profiles. You can have the flat profile, the loop level, you can have a call path profile that shows you the calling sequence, the call site profile, where you could see, for example, that MPI bcast, when it was called from line number 12 in foo.c in the function solver, it took 50 seconds. So you can identify based on a calling location in your code and also the full trace file is available. And along a call path, you can see the different function names and set these environment variables in a instrumented application or set tau call site. You can also annotate phases in your code and it will show you the flat profile under a phase. So to add the hooks in your code, this can be done through a preprocessor where we take a copy of the code and insert the start and stop calls. And this can be done through a shell script to compile your code or you can use a compiler based instrumentation to again add the hooks at the routine levels. One of the easier ways to instrument your code is just to use a runtime preloading of tau's DSO where you can just launch your application using the tau exec command. So instead of MPI run app, you can change it to MPI run tau exec app with no modifications to your application. Well, if you are on a Cray system, you need to use a dash dynamic to link your application. So it creates a dynamic executable. So with this, I would like to transition to the tools interface that provides a bridge, a bridge between the runtime uh, like MVAPH and tau. And you can then reconfigure the MPI runtime with the tunable parameters that are set by changing the control variables. And this bridge is through the MPI tools interface, which is part of the MPI standard. So we have many tools that rely on the PMPI profiling interface, but this shows uh, the MPI functions like a black box where you can just see the parameters that go in and out, but you do not see what's happening inside the MPI calls. So if you want to, peek inside, you can use the MPI tools interface where uh, the application can then view the performance variables that show what's happening inside the MPI library. Now, this may be very useful to see uh, internal, uh, internal values of the runtime so that you can see the memory usage, you can see the InfiniBand control packets, out of order packets, you can see uh, other things like the point to point messages with unexpected queue lengths and uh, a number of informative variables that are exported by the MVAPH runtime. And you can also set these control variables that can change the internal settings. So you could modify, for example, the threshold where an internal uh, algorithm change happens, say, from using an eager uh, a rendezvous protocol, you could switch to an eager protocol at a certain uh, message size. So there are a lot of uh, interesting features that uh, MPIT based uh, implementations support and you can set the MPIT variables. Now we have this uh, support for MPIT in tau where you can see the the bridge that uh, we use and you can get the performance variables you can set these control variables there's an interactive user dashboard 
you can observe these in the tau performance data that's generated and there are three different scenarios we have uh, explored one is with a non interactive mode where you just uh, run the application and at the end of the application you create the uh, re reports and then you can view them or you can have a user interactive mode where you can set the parameters and update those parameters and uh, we also have a policy driven mode where you can decide based on a set of uh, rules what it should do to set the variables and uh, here is the architecture we have enter and exit events the atomic events you have per thread performance data that's maintained in tau and then using this uh, set of measurements we can explore the the event interface so we have a, a data that is exported to a plugin and tau provides a plugin interface which can then trigger internal modifications and uh, this plugin architecture is unique uh, in that you can have third party tools that can observe the events that come from tau that come from the runtime and then they can make uh, uh, modifications based on control variables that can then propagate to the runtime and then you can change the internal workings of the uh, runtime so with this plugin architecture we have been able to explore quite a few uh, test cases and what i would like to share with you is some advanced tuning scenarios where uh, we can then explore uh, parts of the runtime and this is the architecture where you have tau and the plugin registration for different plugins now these can be plugins that uh, a user can write themselves and then just uh, install them and instantiate them in the uninstrumented application using tau exec and uh, it can point to the shared object and then it receives those events that it registers for and then create the recommendation so we also have a library of plugins that we have created which leverages this uh, uh, this plugin framework and then with this you can have multiple plugins too that can uh, observe different states of the program and then access uh, the mpi tools interface and modify the internal control variables so there are phase based recommendations where we can then observe the performance of a given phase of a program and then measure precisely how much time is being spent in say collective operations and then generate recommendations that can be observed in tau's paraprof gui for the set uh, for the user so that they can enable advanced features for example uh, a recommendation that we have for uh, uh, for modifying runtime is to enable the use of the sharp for collective operations for uh, melanox infinity band and here is an example of that where it says that there are these different phases allocate the allocate driver in a profile and you can see that the recommendation is uh, uh, the performance improvement in this particular phase using the sharp features will allow you to use the hardware the network hardware to make uh, the collective operations so you can get phase by phase uh, recommendations from tau and then here are examples of uh, use of mpit support uh, based on the control variables and these are examples of using memory and uh, uh, algorithms for implementing of those uh, collective operations that you can modify using tau and here is an example of how you can use an uninstrumented application and then turn on tracking of uh, the mpit pvars you have to configure tau with the dash mpit support configuration option and then you can set the control variables you can set the values for those and then run the application now what's interesting is that this is an unmodified binary and you can change what the mpi runtime does by just setting these environment variables and launching it through tau exec and then you can see the performance variables there is a full list of these variables 
that are exposed by MVAPH2 and the control variables that you can modify. And you can see this in Tau's interface. You can then pick a value and change it by setting the variable like that. And then you can also set multiple control variables where you can say MPIT, CVARS metrics and give a list of those metrics and the list of their values and just uh, invoke the application using Tau exec. Here is an example of the VBuff usage, the memory used by MVAPH buffers uh, internally. And then without this and with the control variables, and you can see the change in the value from zero to 16. And then it sets the VBuff pools. And then you can see the total memory usage goes down. And here are examples of uh, what, what happens when you set that variable. And you can set the CVAR metrics variable like this. Now we have done some more work. We have uh, extended tau to support control variables on a per communicator basis. Now, if your application has multiple communicators like odd and even uh, ranks, and then you want to set a variable that changes the value of uh, some control variable based on the communicator name, then you can pick that based on, uh, you know, you can say MPI uh, com set name and give a name and that name propagates inside tau and then you can pick that name over here and then the CVAR name and then set its value and then again execute the application. So in this case, in this application called com, you can set the MPI cart com uh, communicator name and then change its value and you can see what's happening in MPI barrier on a per communicator basis too. So here is how you can set the communicator names and values. So this is a triple. You say for this communicator name, this is the control variable and this is its value. And then you can set this again as an environment variable and launch tau exec and run it. And then you can see the change in performance that happens based on the communicator based profiling. And here's a comb profile that shows uh, how the application performs. And you have support for event-based sampling as well. So you can see what the rest of the application is doing, as well as the performance of MPI on a basis of each communicator. And you can set variables and see what the entire stack looks like. And here are the control variables that are exposed by MVAPH2. And recently we have just added support for path aware profiling. Now imagine a situation where you have uh, GPUs and uh, you want to do a, a message communication operation between nodes from GPU memory to GPU memory. And you want to find out exactly which path that message took. So th on the host side, uh, like, like on a power nine uh, system, you have an MPI send call and that send refers to the buffer in the GPU memory that gets transferred through the Mellanox InfiniBand hardware through GPU direct uh, async operations like GDR to the other node. And then the, finally the message resides in the other node, but it may traverse a path going from GPU to GPU, GPU to the internode link. And you can see all the path identifiers over here and uh, we partition the time taken in MPI operations based on that. And so you can see the time spent in MPI send, you can see the message path ID, which is comprised of 10 and 06 or 10 and 06 and 00. And we are improving the, the, the way we represent that. And uh, we can partition the time based on that. Here is the example of the, the 3D profile browser that comes in Tau. And with this, I would like to conclude and say that you can download Tau from tau.uoregon.edu. We also have uh, OVA files for VirtualBox at the HPC Linux. We have a Tau commander uh, interface to Tau, which improves the uh, usability and simplifies the deployment. And we have containers, full featured containers with uh, Tau uh, available from the extreme scale scientific software.
ஹலோ I think we lost him. Yes, um, we we also lost him. So just to, let's wait for a few minutes. So he should be back. might be we can uh, proceed and uh, let me introduce the next set of speakers and uh, if he comes uh, back uh, we'll dynamically uh, handle the the q a session um so can